All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from, well, today is sunny San Diego. It's been a bit of a rainy one lately, but today it's a sunny San Diego. And I am delighted to be joined from Denver, Colorado by Justin Naziri. How are you doing, Justin? Thanks so much for having me, John. Yeah, and Justin is the CEO of Executive Presence, a fully managed LinkedIn service for executives. Uh, you started your career in the U.S. Navy, where you served on board nuclear submarines. Wow, that's a, that had to be an interesting, interesting time. Uh, you earned your MBA from Stanford Business uh, School, and you've built and sold three companies. And what we're going to talk about today is how to use LinkedIn to build authority and, and visibility. And so... Uh, just a much my first question is, so if you look back at the history of LinkedIn, I, I was actually on LinkedIn in the very early days. I can't remember my number on it. I, I used to, I can't remember where I find it. But anyway, I was uh, one of the early ones. And LinkedIn started, you know, when I was still in Silicon Valley. And you used to get, I used to get maybe a, a connection request every couple of months, right? <laughs> I mean, literally. Mm -hmm. And then, and then it grew a little. And then the financial crisis hit. And suddenly everybody's on LinkedIn because they're all looking for jobs. Mm -hmm. And then fast forward, COVID. Now everybody's trying to sell and spam on LinkedIn. And yeah. so LinkedIn has become so, so messy, I think, in many, many ways that I'm very interested to know how can you cut through the mess and, and actually use it in a really effective manner, uh, not like the way it's been used a lot today, uh, where, you, where it's just been used as a spam tool by some people. Yeah, I think I think that uh, LinkedIn is in the relative early innings, and I agree they're going through some growing pains with a lot of uh, sales spamming, a lot of abuse of the platform. But personally, I think that provides most executives with an opportunity, which is if you approach it in the right way, you can really stand out and uh, have two benefits, which is namely activating your network in a scalable way, right? We most, most of us have incredible networks of people we went to school with and have worked with, most of whom don't even know what we do for a living. So LinkedIn gives you that advantage of being able to let them know what you're up to. So you're top of mind for referrals and for any way that they might help you. And second of all, it allows you to establish yourself as an authority in your industry and to grow an audience in service of your brand. And so we can go into as much detail as you would like, but I would just throw out two things as a starting point for people to consider to properly use LinkedIn. Um, the first one is to be present as a person. A lot of companies have a company page, which is really mm -hmm. table stakes. But at the end of the day, it's really all about your personal page on LinkedIn. And I like to say that B2B is now H to H. Business to business is now human to human. And LinkedIn is all about that person to person connection. So don't hide behind your company, make use of your personal presence. And then second of all, if you choose to be active on LinkedIn, the way to stand out is to add value. Don't just promote when you're in Forbes magazine or when you mm -hmm. just you were so humbled to be on a podcast. That's great. But it's better to share what you know, and you know a lot about your industry, about your company, about your functional role. So if you approach it as how can I give back to my network, you're really going to stand out as someone who's trustworthy and someone who knows what they're talking about. And even that tiny step will differentiate you from 99% of the people on LinkedIn right now. Yeah, because uh, that, that's uh, no, I agree, and I think that's one of the fascinating things is that uh, when you see, say, you see somebody in the industry, uh, it's the right industry, it's somebody that you think you want to connect with, and they post something of interest, and you just go like it and say, "Great post." Um, when anybody does that to me, I go, "Yeah, you never read it." Um, yeah. But it's a lot different than if I go, wow, that was a really good point. Uh, let me ask you a further question. Or you at least show some engagement with it, genuine engagement with it, because you see a lot of people just going, you know, pretending, I think, pretending yeah. to engage. Yeah, I think that authenticity sells in life and as well on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you show up as your authentic self on LinkedIn, sharing and interacting as you would in person, that's going to make a difference. And I think you're right on the comments. You know, it's first of all, commenting is great. 
I, I don't really know who likes my content, but if you comment on my content, I remember your name, I remember what you said. So it's a way to stand out, but it's, it's also a really effective way to engage in a dialogue. And as an example, about a month ago, I posted about how I don't think LinkedIn is ready for video and how I don't think people should be posting on video on LinkedIn yet. And in the comments had a great dialogue that completely changed my mind. And I feel like it's just the intention. If you if you show up to add value and actually engage and learn, it's a whole different experience. And there's a lot of business impacts, but it's also a great way to connect with people uh, that you might not otherwise be in a geographic area around. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I think when you have those engagements and you have those discussions in there, I mean, they, you know, it, it encourages other people then to to perhaps join in and you start to expand, expand your reach. Um, but here's another thing is uh, there's a lot of content being published on LinkedIn. Yeah. Yep. Uh, there's a lot of content being published, period. I mean, it's getting to the point where I often say, you know, everybody's, if everybody's publishing content, who's reading it? Yeah. Um, and so how do you, how do you do this effectively and elegantly and stand out rather than being just these people just throwing content at LinkedIn? I think it starts by, are you someone who has something unique to say? And I think that most people underestimate the unique knowledge that they hold. So mm. whether that is a distinct industry knowledge, or maybe you're really good at sales or marketing, or maybe you have a different perspective, um, social media, but LinkedIn in particular, really rewards contrarian viewpoints. So if you feel like everyone is talking about hustle culture and how great that is, and you think it's BS, great you'll actually get a lot of attention if you're like i actually think this is awful and this is why so if you show up and you have something unique to say it's absolutely additive and the biggest thing that i would encourage people to consider here it's all about expectation if you show up to linkedin expecting to get millions of views you're going <laughs> to be disappointed right it's kind of like the it's the podcasting joe rogan effect where everyone expects to have a hundred yep. million listeners mm -hmm. but if you think of it more in terms of a, let's say, a conference room at a local hotel, hotel uh -huh. if you had 150 people showing up every single day to listen to what you had to say, that's pretty valuable. But for some reason, if you're consistently getting 150 views every day on LinkedIn, you feel like you're failing. I think it's just a mindset shift of thinking like, wow, if I have 500, 1,000, 2,000 people reading my content and I'm top of mind every day, that's really valuable. And in my view, that's worth expending a few minutes a day to share some knowledge that you have that might benefit someone else. Yeah, there's two things you said there that I just wanted to pick up on. First of all, I love what you said about the fact that people have expertise that they don't realize this this uh, uh, this does fascinate me when you have conversations with some people sometimes they say well i don't really have anything to say or whatever and I, and you go but what about when you did this and you used to do that right and uh, and suddenly they start telling stories engaging and you're just saying hey share that share that 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 is that is insight that i didn't have that you just provided to me yep. that's you know and that's um so I, like you, I love podcasts, um, and I, I hosted uh, 460 episodes of my own podcast, and one of the insights was when I would sit across from someone, and I sure, for sure, I'm sure you feel the same way, when I would sit across from someone and just bring curiosity and an outside perspective, you would pull out the most amazing stories and insights from someone that they might not, you know, if you gave them a pen and paper and said, write down something amazing, they would come up a blank. But if I asked them questions, you could draw that out of them. And that's with my company. That's where the idea came from is like we can sit down with executives. We can bring curiosity. We can ask questions and bring out these insights and turn that into written content for LinkedIn. It not only saves time for them, but it, it brings out the knowledge of they've got this superpower they're unaware of. And if you want to take it one step further, one of the reasons I think LinkedIn is so valuable is it can take your knowledge and atomize it down to a very small level and get data on whether it's valuable. So, you know, 10 years ago, I might go to a conference and give a keynote and I'd get some applause or laughs or people nodding, but I don't really know what I said was valuable. 
But instead on LinkedIn, I could take that same keynote, I could turn it into 20 LinkedIn posts, I could put it out there. And within 20 days, I'll say, you know what, when I talk about resilience, people really connect with that. But when I talk about leadership, it falls flat. So people don't value my feedback on that. Maybe I should triple down on resilience where people actually value it. So I think that LinkedIn, it's overlooked that yes, you can build an audience. Yes, you can gain daily relevance with your network, but you can also get hard numbers about where your expertise is valued. Yeah, though no, I think that that's another that's another great point, and and I think the other coming back to the point, but the the service that now you do for executives, um, because that's one of the things that people often say is, well, you know, I'm not a good writer, I'm not this, and you just go, well, hang on a second, you know, comedians have joke writers, you know, people. I mean, it's not always, <laughs> yep. you know, you may be able to write jokes, you're not very good at delivering them, you know, somebody else yep. is good. So I'm a great believer in focusing on what you're good at and then uh, leveraging somebody else's expertise for what they're good at. It's And it's 100% why I started the company, as I said, okay, I see people on LinkedIn who are getting massive exposure, but these people aren't the ones who necessarily have the deepest expertise. These are the people who have the time to play the game. And when I looked around at people I went to school with or people I've worked with or people I really admire, I thought, wow, they've got the superior knowledge, but they're busy building an empire. They're busy growing a company with hundreds of employees they don't have the time to do this but i thought look we can come to them with a process that takes an hour of their time a month and we'll do everything for them and the great thing is it's not it's not inauthentic we're we're talking to them we're transcribing the call so we have their insights their words their phrasing everything about their voice we're just taking the time to craft it into something that's going to perform well on LinkedIn, which has its all whole complete set of copywriting rules around having a compelling hook and a clear takeaway. And there's all of these rules to good copywriting on LinkedIn. But our clients don't need to know those rules. Our clients don't have to be good writers. They just have to show up and share their knowledge authentically. And it's that authenticity which attracts people to them. We're not trying to pretend to be anyone else. We're trying to, as accurately as possible, capture who they are and transform it from the, the spoken word into the written word. Uh, and I, I know, and I, and I agree. I think that authenticity piece is is so incredibly important. Um, one of the my least favorite uh, things that LinkedIn brought in was that auto email. You know, when somebody when you yeah. uh, because you know, I get these ones and I get these lovely personalized uh, in mails. I want to connect with you and blah, blah, blah. And it's all really nice. And it's blah, blah. And I go, okay. And I hit, I hit yep. accept and ping up comes this auto email with the sales pitch. And I'm like, oh yep. dear, there we go again. And immediate that's that un for me. Unfollow. Yeah. Immediate unfollow. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I think the authenticity piece is, is really, really incredibly important, especially now that we have automated tools and AI and all these other things creeping into it, I think authenticity is going to become even more critical. And I, I think um, I, I'm 100% with you. And I think that most listeners realize the buyer's journey has changed. So mm -hmm. I may send out a connection request. I'm pretty aggressive with connection requests when I meet someone, not because I'm trying <laughs> to sell them, but I want them to see my posts every day because they're going to get to know five days a week for the long run, what my values are, what I'm doing, how I'm adding value. And it may be six months from now, but they may reach out to me and they know me, they trust me, they're coming to me, they're already educated. I don't have to sell them. So the, the, the mindset shift is it's not about quick fix, quick customer acquisition. This is scalable relationship building. And one minor anecdote, but I can share a lot of these. You know, I had someone three weeks ago that I had not spoken to in 20 years. That's someone I went to school with. I had not spoken to him literally in 20 years. He's connected to me on LinkedIn. He sees my content. He knows what I do. He introduced me to their CEO. A week later, they were a client. I would have never thought to reach out to this person. I would have never thought to pitch them or to ask them to intro me to their CEO. All I did is I showed up every single day, adding value, educating, generously approaching my network, and it led to something I would have never expected. So it's not SEO, it's not AdWords, it's not gonna bring you a sale today, but I feel like the best things in our lives, like exercise and saving for retirement, 
These are things that we take tiny actions every day and cumulatively, they take us to where we wanna go. LinkedIn is no different. It's daily actions that will eventually compound to what you're wanting. Yeah, and and what you just said there about the relationship building, I mean, like relationship building and real life relationship building on on LinkedIn, you don't build a relationship by firing a connection request and then bombarding the person afterwards. That's not how you build. I mean, yep. if you try that and try that in real life and see where it gets you. Um, but it's that <laughs> point. But I, I, I think I think that's it is that people have lost the art. Uh, some people have lost the art and the patience of what real relationship building is because we live in this shortcut culture, instant world. And they just think, Oh, well, if he's not going to respond to that, then I'm off. I'm, I'm on to, there's millions of other people I could harass. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And it's, you know, I think it comes back to authenticity and I feel like the, the flip side of authenticity that people don't talk about is that that will repel some people. If I'm mm -hmm. really showing up online the way I'm, I am in person, there is a lot of people who are going to be drawn to that. And there's going to be a lot of people that get repelled by that and say, oh, that's not what I want. But who cares? I'd rather have someone out of my tribe sooner. And I'd rather very, very sp uh, quickly get narrow in who I'm speaking to rather than trying to be everyone to everything. So I'm a big believer on things like LinkedIn is share what you know, but also share your values, share what you believe in. And that's going to attract the right employees, the right partners, the right investors, the right customers. And it will turn away even more people than that. But that doesn't matter. This is about finding people that are a good fit. That's what a relationship is, a good fit on both sides. You don't have to be everything to everyone. Yeah, and I think that's a really important point because I think you know people got, have gotten carried away with LinkedIn just like other so they they think of it like other social media platforms and think uh, as we said earlier it's all about volume you know the more likes the more followers the more of this I have the better but as you say I could have millions of followers but if they're all in the wrong industries and they've no interest in what I'm doing well that's nice it's vanity it's, but it's uh, it's not helping yeah. me. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's also important to think, and this is one of the things we start with our clients is like, what do you want to be known for? If you're mm. an expert in artificial intelligence, that's a, a, a smaller audience who cares about that, yeah. but that's a relevant audience. So I don't want you talking about productivity hacks. I don't want you talking about getting up at 4am and cold showers and all of these things that anyone can talk about. I would rather you share your unique perspective on AI because that's what benefits you and your company. Will it get hundreds of millions of likes? No, but will it get a hundred relevant likes? Absolutely. And the relevancy is what matters. Yeah, I no, I I think that's true as well because I I mean you see nowadays some people are, you know, they're looking for what's trending, what's trending, what's trending, and then they start writing about it, but they don't really have anything to say, or they stick it in an AI tool and a few keywords and have it, and that's where I'm talking where it's just adding adding junk. Yeah, yeah, I think so, and I think you know I watched a great video by Steve Jobs the other day, you know. 20 years ago talking about AI and he compared it to a bicycle, which is, you know, it's a tool that allows man to go faster. I think that the people who are going to win are yeah. the people who realize that AI is just a tool to enhance creativity, but it's not going to replace it. That's, uh, I just don't see that happening. No, no, I'm not 100% agree with you. Don't see that happening either. Um, I think it can, I think there's some fascinating and great uh, ways it can be, can be leveraged. But for me, uh, AI is, like you said, with the bicycle, it's just going to help you get to where you want to go quicker. But it's also going to take away a lot of the stuff that you don't need to be doing and and allow you to do high value things. And I think that's I think that's where it where it comes in. And I think to your point on LinkedIn, if you approach it with, with that mindset to go, I'm going to only do things of high value here. I think that's probably a better route to go. I 100 percent agree. Yeah, well, listen, um, thanks, Justin. This has been fantastic. Like uh, All of Justin's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell the audience a little bit more about you and your company. Yeah, the uh, company's at executivepresence.io. Uh, we work with any executive. We tend to work with CEOs because they're the face and the voice of the brand. Mm -hmm. But we work with them. We meet with them once a month. We start with um, we start with five minutes reviewing their last month of data and what we've learned about what's resonating and who their audience is. And then we do a 55 minute interview where we ask questions in line with our content strategy for them. 
that's really all they do. We have a team of writers that turn that interview into daily LinkedIn posts. We post on their behalf. The next month we meet, we share what you learned and we do it again. It's very iterative, but it's like a heat seeking missile where each time we get a little bit closer and closer to finding their voice on LinkedIn. Yeah. And just one, just one question just occurred to me there. I remember some years ago, there was some reluctance often by, by CEOs or by heads of companies to be the face on, on a platform like LinkedIn. Have, have, you, have you seen that dissipate? It's, you know, there's still a lot of people reluctant, and I think that they're slowly losing out to the CEOs who are willing to be in the spotlight. The most surprising thing to me, and we've worked with hundreds of CEOs now, most of the CEOs we meet with, they're not chest beating, they're not wanting the spotlight, they're not what people think of when they think of Elon Musk. And yeah. instead, they're they're very uncomfortable with social media. They don't want the spotlight. They want the spotlight on their team and on their company. But the phrase that we offer them is, we're doing this in service of your company. If you're willing to tolerate that discomfort of being in the spotlight, you can leverage that to hire talent, retain talent, motivate your employees, find investors, find customers. There are so many brand building, building elements to this if the CEO is willing to do that. But at times it feels like, you know, in the 90s when people were like, oh, I don't need a website. That's not for me. Mm -hmm. No, this yeah. is the way things are done now. People want to know the leaders they're working for. They want to know the people they're working with. B2B is now H2H. -H. Business to business yep. is now human to human. And you need to be willing to humanize your business. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And to be honest, I think the pandemic has even put a, you know, underline that more, the, the human element that people are craving. Yeah. Uh, well, listen, thanks again, Justin. As I said, all Justin's information will be below this video. So thank you, Justin. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you. Yeah.